Stroud has without a doubt the best stream design on Twitch. My absolute favorite is his webcam overlay. Just just a simple, clean black border with a nice, subtle blue glow underneath it. Welcome back to Crash Course Content. My name is Noah, but you can call me Neat. And tonight, I'm gonna show you how to make Shroud's webcam border using only the free resources found in DaVinci Resolve. Dive into it. Before we get started, I'd like to say that the DaVinci Resolve project we're about to create together will be found in my Discord in the free assets section for you to reference. So I do encourage you to stick around and see the process so you know how to tweak all of the settings so that you can create your own border personalized to your own stream. All right, let's jump into Resolve. Okay, so I've loaded up into a new DaVinci Resolve project here. And the first thing we wanna do is go into our project settings and make sure we have it where we want it. Now, I'm gonna assume you want a 60 FPS stream, so we're gonna work in 60 FPS. And I don't really need the entire effect to be 4K. It's gonna be kind of a small webcam border. So let's even work in like 1280 by 720. This is gonna make it easier to edit and also easier to render at the end. Okay, from there we hit save and hit change and then we move on to the edit tab. From here we jump into the effects library and under effects here we're gonna grab a fusion composition. Now Shroud's animation is actually very slow and subtle and it goes for a long time before looping. So let's go ahead and make this a 40 second fusion composition. Once we've done that, we're done in the edit page. We can go ahead and jump on over to the fusion page and we can get started. Now the first thing I like to do is I like to drag in a uh, kind of a picture of myself or through my camera so that I can get an idea of what I'm going to look like inside the camera border. So I think we'll go ahead and use this one. Yeah, that's a good one. Once we have this background node, we can take the output of our media node here and drag it to the output of the background node and that automatically creates a merge node for us. Now, if I throw that merge node into the left little monitor here, you see I'm way zoomed in. So I'm gonna bring the size down here. You notice that'll bring my face down into this space. And this is where we'll create our webcam border. I don't actually want the background to be black. I want it to be transparent. So I'm gonna go over to this background node and I'm gonna drag the alpha down to zero. And now you'll see my webcam kind of exists in the space that we're gonna pretend is my stream background. Okay, from there, we're going to create another merge node. You can grab it here, bring it down. And we're gonna take this and throw this into the background. And then everything else we're gonna do is going to go into the foreground of this merge node. So all of the overlay elements are going to overlay on top of this little webcam cutout we've got here. First things first, we wanna create the little black border around our webcam. So let's go ahead and grab another background node. And you'll notice this is just black. If we wanna make it a border, we have to like make it into a shape. So for that, we're going to use a mask. So for that, we're gonna grab our rectangle node here and drag it into the mask of the background. And you'll notice we're already starting to get the shape we want. Let's go ahead and click on our rectangle. And now let's go ahead and change some of these options over here. Let's uncheck solid, which will make everything disappear for a moment, but let's go ahead and start dragging up this border width. And you'll notice we start to get our border, huh? So if we go ahead and drag this into the foreground of our merge node, you'll notice once we throw this into a monitor, we've already got something going here. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the width and height of this rectangle to an appropriate size. But this is based on 16 by nine proportions, so I want these to be the same number. Let's go ahead and make this 0.655 as well. I'll go ahead and move this over to the right monitor here. And then we'll leave it there so we can see how our effect is changing the entire effect as we go along. Let's come over to our rectangle and background here and let's go ahead and make a clone of them by copying and pasting. And we're gonna use this other background node to create the color, the blue, that then we're then going to plug into a glow, which is going to create the effect of the glowing blue border. But first things first, let's come to this border and let's make it blue. Now Shroud's blue is kind of a cyan, so we'll kind of play with our blue and green values here. Go ahead and make this 0.69. I think that's pretty nice. Now from there, we're gonna hit control and space to bring up our effects kind of search engine here. And from here, we can start typing in glow. We get several kinds of glow here. I like the GLO glow. Uh, you can also play around with soft glow. There's a lot of similar options, but I find just the plain old glow with the GLO after it. I don't know why there's two of them here. 
but I find this one to work a lot better for the effect we're going for. So all we do here is click add and now our little node is created and we'll drag the output of the background node we created into the input of the glow. Now here, if we throw it in the monitor, we can already see we're starting to get kind of that glowy effect. Now I'm gonna take the output of this glow and I'm actually gonna drag it into the output of this background node here. And that's actually going to create a merge node for us that is then going to work into our merge from earlier. You'll notice though that it creates them in the wrong order. Now our blue border glowing border sits on top of our black background. So we need to switch up where these are going so that it sits on top like this. And you can already see the effect is starting to come together. Now the first thing we wanna correct is we do not want the glow to glow on the inside of the camera border here over our camera. Easiest way we can correct that is by coming down to our merge two and bringing in another rectangle mask. Now you notice this masks everything at the start and we don't want it to do that. We want it to do the opposite of that. So we hit invert and now we can just drag the corners here until they just barely cover the glow effect. And we still retain, we click off here, it still retains the black border we have. Next, we want the glow to move around the border. So what we're gonna do for that is we're first going to have to create another mask on top of the glow so that only a certain portion of it is visible at a given time. Easiest way to do that is, you guessed it, another mask. We'll grab, you guessed it, another rectangle, bring it out here and plug it into our glow. Now we'll come into our rectangle and uncheck solid again. And this time we have now an option called length. So you'll see if I drag this mask up so that it encapsulates the, the border. I'm gonna drag it so that it matches our rectangle pretty closely. Then I'm gonna take the border width and drag it upwards until we see the glow again. Let me just throw the rectangle into the left monitor here so you can see a little bit what we're doing. I'm gonna take the length bar here and I'm gonna drag it downwards and you see you get a little bit of a draw effect. Now it's a little bit harsh right now on the border so I'm gonna go ahead and take soft edge and start bringing that upwards until we see the glow effect start to really come together. I want this to be a perfect corner, so I'm gonna go ahead and make this 0.25. Now the glow on Shroud's webcam kind of bounces around kind of randomly. I like to have it to where there's two separate glows kind of bouncing around each other. The easiest way to do that is with another merge node, actually. All we have to do is create a new merge node. This is our merge four. We're gonna take the output of merge three out of merge two throw it in the foreground of merge four. Then we're gonna take the glow output and throw it into the background of merge four as well. And if we throw merge four into the viewer here and then hit flip horizontal and flip vertical, you notice now we have two symmetrical glows. And as we animate the glows, these are actually going to move in tandem with each other. It's gonna be super slick. Now let's stay organized. Let's just move all of these to the left here and put the merge fours output now into the foreground of merge two. See our effects starting to come together. Now we come to the fun part, which is animating this b now, animating DaVinci Resolve is a little intimidating at first, but we're gonna make it super simple. First, we gotta identify what it is we wanna animate. Now, we want the glow to kind of breathe in and out, and we want it to move around the webcam border. So that's really only two things we need to animate. It's, uh, it's, that's two things we wanna animate. First, we'll do the breathing of the glow. So let's come over to our glow here and let's identify what we want to animate. So I don't really want the glow size to change because as you increase it, it just kind of becomes more spread out. What I really want is the glow aspect to start to increase. Let's find a good start point for this. Let's maybe go maybe 0.925, nine to five. Ugh, I do not want to be thinking about nine to five right now. Let's go ahead and add a keyframe which will denote that that's going to become a point of animation. Now let's think about how fast we want this glow to breathe. Now this is a 40 second clip and it's broken down into 2,400 frames. The first one starting at zero. I think I want the glow to breathe over the course of 10 seconds or so. Now that doesn't mean our second keyframe is gonna go at 600. We actually want it at about our halfway point, which is gonna be 300. Now we'll add our second keyframe here. And all we have to do is drag this slider down to about where we want it. Now I actually like the look of 0.8 for our dim brightness. So now we want this to loop over the course of the entire animation. So all you have to do is come up here and click on spline and then click our glow aspect, which is the only thing we've marked to animate. We'll go ahead and click this button here, zoom to fit to see what we're doing. Then we'll come down here and click select all. And then we'll come over here to ping pong. And then suddenly you'll notice it will now animate back and forth over the course of the entire animation. And as long as you've chosen a number of frames divisible by 2400, it'll be a perfect loop throughout the animation. Now, I don't really want a super jarring in and out. I want a really smooth kind of breathe in 
breathe out kind of hold at the, at the extremes so what we're going to do is we're going to smooth out this animation a little bit let me go back to zoom to fit and now all we have to do is hit smooth and suddenly our animation is smooth now i want it to hold even longer than it does in the default smoothing so all we have to do is hold alt as we grab these little nodes here and that will keep you from dragging them up and down and I'm going to drag that to the 150 area and see the number in the corner there to denote that you're doing it right. And I'm going to do the same for here. Now that that's nice and smooth, we can close our spline here. And as we move through the animation, we'll see our glow breathe in and out. Now I want to animate the path moving along the border. So we're going to come to our rectangle here. You notice we have a quality here called position. As we move the position, you'll notice that it starts to animate the border. Now I want the border to run clockwise, but as you notice, as we increase, it starts to run counterclockwise. So we're actually gonna start with one and go ahead and click keyframe here. Now I want this to make the full rotation over the course of 20 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out to the 20 second mark here, which is gonna be frame 1200. I'm actually just gonna drag the position down to zero. I'll go to spline and I'll uncheck glow and I'll go ahead and go to zoom to fit select all and then instead of ping pong i can actually just hit set loop and zero and one are the same position and we don't want it to change directions now i personally don't want any smoothing in the way that it goes around my camera border so i'm not going to add any smoothing that's it now you'll notice the entire animation actually loops over the course of about 20 seconds but I've made the animation here 40 seconds long. The reason I did that is I didn't want to add just the animation to the camera border. I wanted to add my logo and have its own animation on top of the camera border. And the longer an animation is, the more out of sync you can make the animations that will eventually sync back up at the loop point, if that makes sense. Okay, so to finish up, we actually want this to sit on top of our face cam and not this fake face cam. So let's go ahead and remove that. Easiest way to do that is just to take this background node and throw it in the background here. That way it keeps all of our masks and shit in place. Pull this merge into our media out. Now if we hop on over to the edit page, you'll see our camera border. Since our animation only ended up being 20 seconds long, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back down to 20 seconds. Then we come over to the export tab. And when we export this, we have to make sure we use a file format that includes the transparency. So I'm gonna come here to QuickTime and then to GoPro Cineform. I'm gonna take the type and change it to RGB 16 bit, and then make sure I click export alpha before we export it. And I'm gonna click add to render queue and go ahead and render it out. Now the MOV file that you're gonna end up with when you've rendered this out is gonna be very, very resource intensive when you import it into OBS. So we need to use FFmpeg to kind of re-render it into a WebM format, which is gonna be way easier on your computer. There's gonna be a .bat file in the Discord. It's gonna be in the free resources channel alongside this DaVinci Resolve project. As long as you've got FFmpeg installed, all you need to do is move the MOV you created into an empty folder alongside the .bat file and then run the .bat file. And you'll notice the resulting WebM file is gonna be tiny compared to the MOV file. You notice this MOV file of mine was 966 megabytes and the WebM ended up being only four. All right, that's it. Now you have a slick, clean webcam border to use on your stream overlay. Big thank you to my patrons who make this possible. You can join this list of awesome people by checking out the link in the description. If you don't like me that much yet, that's fine. I don't really like me either. The least you could do though is head down and hit that subscribe button. And while you're down, hit the like button if you found this video useful. Hopefully now you're a fusion wizard and you can start making all kinds of cool stuff for your stream overlays. Go make some cool shit. Have a jazzy night. Is that because my 2019 taxes are all wrapped up, I didn't get the $600 stimulus from, from Donald Trump and I never got the $1,400 stimulus from, from Joe Biden. So my ass is getting stimulated in the next couple of days. <laughs>